time, could you please introduce yourself so we know who you are and how you're sort of related to, you know, leadership and business and all the great things you can teach us? Sure. So what I do is I'm the CEO and founder of The Life School, and I help purpose-driven entrepreneurs and business leaders grow legacy business through branding, marketing, sales systems, and team so they can positively affect their communities and do more good in the world. What are the most significant challenges you face in transforming workplace culture and leadership within your organization of, or those of your clients? I think one of the biggest challenges that I've seen and that I personally always focus on in my company, and now I have a team of over 30 employees, uh, global, uh, global team, uh, because we serve global communities at this point, is always really uniting everyone, keeping everyone focused around the bigger vision and mission um, of the of the work and of the company and what we're trying to accomplish and the different focuses that it takes to really expand the company in different levels uh, while not disfocusing everyone and while of course keeping everyone on the same page. So I would say that is one of the main uh, things that I've seen also from working with so many corporations and um, small businesses um, mm -hmm. is it's definitely a, a big issue there with as far as um, understanding how um, to keep everyone on board on the same ship. Uh, could you describe uh, a recent situation where you felt that uh, your leadership team or the leadership team of your clients could have benefited from additional training or guidance in culture building leadership or both? Mm -hmm. um, so I had a, a major client that I am um, I worked with. Um, I would rather not disclose the name of the company, but it's really no problem. Um, the challenge that they had with as far as the, the culture there is really retention, right? Keeping the right people on board, as you said before you actually started asking me the second question here, but uh, keeping them on board and really um, keeping people motivated nowadays, because I think our work culture has changed, especially after COVID. People are looking for, usually what they're looking for is organizations where they can be connected to the higher purpose of the, of the work that they do. They want to know that they're doing meaningful work. They want to know how is it that their personal goals or their personal visions or values align with the companies? And so I would say that is something that um, a problem that, that this particular company was having. So it's really going back to the drawing board and understanding um, who are the right talent to attract in the company, right? Because I think that is something that a lot of companies um, mishap or overlook, so to speak. They focus a lot on their ideal clients and their customers that they're serving, and they try to find out as much as they can about that. But I would say that we would need to do the same thing when we are recruiting, right? Because it's really the same process as you are attracting the right client you want to work with, uh, which is the right team member. Not everyone is a good fit for your organization, but in order for you to know who is the right fit for your organization, you would have to understand what are you specifically attracting? What are the roles you're looking for? What are the personality traits you're looking for? Who is this particular person uh, that will align with that position and what will be their role ultimately in the company and how will that contribute to um, everything else that is happening? So I would say that is something that recently I uh, definitely helped this company uh, clarify. Um, and then we were able to create a strategic plan to start putting in the right hiring practices in place. Um, to start attracting the right pool of clients. And of course, we found them because once you have that clarity and you use the right channels to find that particular team member or a couple of team members that you want to hire, depending on what you're looking for, then just like anything, you have to have the clarity. Then you have to understand the process of how to get there. And usually the, the, the result is always right around the corner. So in this particular uh, example, they hired their top talent and they're very high performing um, in, in the company. And now they're using the same process to streamline a lot of other hiring practices they have going on. What specific outcomes would you hope to achieve through training in leadership and culture building? 
specific outcomes is, of course, the raise of productivity. That is uh, usually um, the most immediate outcome that most companies are looking for in those aspects. Um, and then as far as leadership is really the execution of the day-to-day -day of their operations in ensuring that the company is running efficiently, but also it's focusing on its growth plans for the future or for the expansion of different departments CEO has set out to achieve. So um, yeah, I would say those top two is what I've seen mostly. You are very efficient at this. I'm a very yeah. straightforward speaker. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. Hopefully the, you know, whoever resonates with that resonates with that. Um, I'm a very straightforward to the point sort of person. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. Hopefully that drives the right message for people. Sooner rather than later. So And, and trust is established. That's a very important piece. There, for right? sure. When trust is established that those conversations can, uh, mm -hmm. can happen and everyone uh, can feel safe to share their opinion mm -hmm. um, and just be themselves, authentic selves. I think that's, uh, that's absolutely what the goal is for most human beings, wherever they work or mm -hmm. so. Am I safe to be myself? I couldn't agree. So, I agree. next one is, in your opinion, what are the key skills and competencies that leaders should possess to create a thriving organizational culture? I would say empathy, emotion, intelligence is very, very important, strategic thinking, um, casting. And uh, the other one is communication. I think communication is very important. Uh, back to what you were talking about with um, teaching the skill of speaking English. I think even to, in today's world, with all the different markets that we're part of, and let's say for some of us, English is our second language, which is mine. Um, I think it's important for us to understand how to blend between all the different languages and cultures that we actually um, attain because that is part of our journey. So I think leaders that are exposed to different cultures, uh, different languages, the diversity aspect of things definitely adds so much value to your own organization if you are the leader and if you are bringing in that talent and diversity, even with your clients, not only with your teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say those are the top five skills that I've seen are very important in, in leadership. Love it. Okay. The next one then is, what do you think is the ideal duration for a comprehensive course on transforming workplace culture, leadership? I've seen from my work that a good timeline to really provide an immersed transformation for individuals and companies, I would say is between six months and a year. Oh, you mean as far as the timeline of transformation? Yes. Okay. So yeah, what I've seen is uh, why I gave the number is through the work that I've done with uh, human beings, uh, consumers, whether you are personally um, helping someone through a specific result or have mm -hmm. helping many people through a specific result, depending on the container that you are doing that, you're handling that transformation. Um, I would say if you are have more support and hands-on access with someone, that is a good timeline to go by because of the process of me understanding also neuroscience. I have a master's in it and I do bring a lot of that background in the work that I do mm -hmm. in how long it actually takes to unprocess certain things and process, you know, implement new habits, implement new systems, new processes so people can get a specific result. Just like even with business, with what I teach and, and I do for my daily day to day, there is a process to grow in a business and it mm -hmm. takes time. It's not a, it's not an overnight uh, thing. So I think sometimes the marketing messages out there might be very confusing for individuals and companies, uh, whether you like get this quick result, right? Overnight success, make a million in 20, in two years or in one year, right? None of this is what I've seen in my experience is true. So just going by my personal experience and in some indiv individuals and companies I've helped six to a year is definitely a good enough time to start implementing a lot of the uh, right. learnings to speak, depending again on someone's specific result. If you're looking for a quick result, then probably through a specific process, you can get it faster. But I thought you yeah. asked a bigger transformation something that right. could be touchable. People could get those results, life-changing, company-changing. It will affect all your metrics, all your fact, other factors that, yeah, that is a, the timeline I 
have seen that. What formats or delivery methods would be most effective considering your schedule? So if it's specifically asking towards you or your client's schedule and learning preferences. So considering your schedule and learning preferences, what delivery methods and formats do you think would be best for programs on uh, cultural transformation and leadership? I mean, now you have all the source of platforms to host this information and to host your processes mm -hmm. and I help people get a specific result or companies get a specific result. Um, I personally, of course, use certain ones. I don't think there's any better or worse because these are, these are just tools in how you actually deliver the transformation to people. So mm -hmm. if I, do I have a particular one that I favor, depending if you are in the online space, I think everyone eventually starts with Kajabi and then you move on. There's different platforms, but mm -hmm. um, that's what you're asking as far as how to host that. But as far as what I specifically prefer is, again, efficiency. And I I never care about the, the method. I always care about the support and the transformation, the result that I'm able to provide because I'm a very process-oriented type of brain mm -hmm. kind of girl. So for me, that's why I answer the way I answer with the six months because I'm very observant into how long does it actually take from people go from here to there. And again, depending on what results you, you know, you want to, to give companies, I think with experience, you should have a process in play that happens. Mm -hmm. So you should always improve your process to give people better results. Um, so I don't think the channel of how you host it, how you deliver it even matters. You can do it through speaking. You can do it through programs you put together, through courses, um, lunch and learns, executive roundtables. I mean, there's a million methods to deliver. For sure. You know, to your target audience. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think that's something that is that important, honestly, in my world. You know, if they're remote workers, clearly a live intensive onsite is probably not relevant. Again, it's focusing on what are the needs of the person in front of you and how yes. can you serve them at the highest level. I think the rest is just vanity metrics. It's just, oh, which one? It's like tools, shiny objects, right? So if you just yep. focus on your process and ensuring that you are personalizing it, depending on the container, obviously, that you are mm -hmm. a part of. As long as that's always your focus, you will always, you know, um, ensure that you are serving the highest level. And you're also switching between student and uh, teacher mode. I always switch mm -hmm. be between those, right? Because we're always learning. We don't know every, mm -hmm. every. We're at the end of the day, we, we are guides to someone else, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, we don't know everything in the world, but usually people come to you because of a certain experience or result that mm -hmm. you have. Um, you're efficient in providing. And uh, yeah, as long as you just ensure your process is always uh, being more effective over time, shortening the time span, because again, with how we're moving forward, efficiency, you know, making sure results, we're giving it in a shorter amount of time. And you're, if you can add value, that is what you should focus on. I mm -hmm. say not on the, there's a million tools, a million platforms. Every day there's new platforms that come to the market um, to automize and to systematize and to do this or that. So yeah, I, I I don't think those are important. Obviously it's good to know when, depending on what you're trying to do, which one is mm -hmm. going to assist you, but it's not the, the whole purpose of the work that we do is just a tool. It's like a means, just like money mm -hmm. is a means to living and to achieving some of our monetary goals that we have. It shouldn't be the reason why we wake up every day, right? So right. it's just, that's kind of how I see it. I always focus on the person, the needs, the results they're looking for, and how do I serve them at the highest level? That laser focus keeps me very always in touch with what is it that they're looking for. And when it comes to uh, investing in leadership and cultural development, what criteria do you consider when determining the value of a course? It depends on what my focus is and what I'm trying to learn and grow into. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's a very important part of how I decide first, uh, I decide the, you know, what is the, the reason why I want to um, invest in something how is it going to help me how is it how will it align with my goals my vision mission values based on where I am focusing on at the time and then I'll go do my research 
and find the best product or service that I think will um, meet my needs at that time. Um, and that's usually how I make my decisions. Can you share your thoughts on the frequency of coaching sessions, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, that you would uh, that would align best with your needs or those of your clients? Well, I've been in different containers. And obviously, where I've seen the highest level of results is definitely one-to-one -one weekly sessions, private. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh... And that's actually a business model. I suggest a lot of beginner startups to start with, especially in the service industry, mm -hmm. because they don't have a lot of the brand build and all the rest of the pieces, relationships built with their audiences. So that is the business model I always suggest and help people with at the beginning phase of their um, business growth journey. Right, right. What types of uh, ongoing, on-demand support or mentorship would be most beneficial? Is this a personal question or what I've seen in my work? Now I'm getting confused. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this is not a personal question. I mean, it blurs. My life is what I do and what I apply in my own life. But yeah, no, just the, the on, so this is related to the question we were just talking about. So the, the ideal format, the format's most effective in the background beyond that, because especially one-to-one -one is pure support and on an as needed basis for the most part. But a lot of people will answer something like uh, once a week or two day intensives, so background support in the context of sort of more discrete training periods, if somebody needs help between those training periods and it's not a one-to-one -one session. So group training that's on a cyclical thing. And it's like between that, maybe they need some kind of support. So from that framework, let me repeat the question. What types of ongoing on-demand support or mentorship would be most beneficial? Okay, so what I do in my private consulting is in addition to these one-to-one -one, uh, weekly um, sessions that we have, I also offer people the chance to ask me any questions, any feedback, any suggestions they have as they implement the information throughout the week, um, usually, usually around the time frame, time zone that works for my you know, business life, so to speak, without mm -hmm. interjecting to my personal. Um, mm -hmm. And that's usually the other support I provide in addition to modules and trainings that I've created to facilitate the process for them and give them that awareness that they need um, so they can implement and have the clarity they're looking for to, again, get them better results because that's usually mm -hmm. always what my focus is. I get that. Okay, so now this is an extension. This is sort of a three-part question. This is so ideally, and you may have already answered this in what you just said, ideally, how often should that type of support be available? So in a perfect world, how often should support that you've described be available to clients or students? I mean, ideally, <laughs> depending on, you know, what capabilities a business has, but um, ideally, every day support is always a good thing, I would assume. Mm -hmm right? Support every day, depending on what is it that people need. However, depending on timing and value and results and all the things that people can provide, don't know if it's achievable. Also, depending on what level and stage of business growth you're in. So um, I guess I would say daily. Well, but I like that answer because uh, this question evolved from my first interview with it, where I basically said, well, wouldn't perfect be completely on demand at least every day during the work day? Because we were talking about uh, mentors possibly being senior leaders within the organization, not necessarily the training organization or a peer idea market, right? So everybody who's had the training can now go to the group and tap into their group genius when they're stuck. But since we were also talking about senior leaders who obviously have limited time, I says, what would be ideal? was sort of hinting at, well, you decide, but I think ideal would be perfect world. That would be 724, but also that's not realistic. So that's why I asked this in two parts. So daily as a practical ideal, 724 as a fairy tale, perfect universe ideal. So 
Hmm. Well, I mean, based on what you just explained, on demand would be the most ideal. However, I do have my reservations with that, but right? Because everything is on demand nowadays. We all want it now. What we mm -hmm. want now, that will um, probably be most ideal depending on um, the is How do you envision the course or the kind of courses we're talking about helping you address specific cultural or leadership challenges within your organization or those of your clients, uh, those uh, in your clients' organizations? I personally navigate. I don't go for courses. I go for mentors because I, this mm -hmm. is something that I've seen as the most value throughout my journey. So I think whatever you know works best, we always will be attracted to. Um, mm -hmm. So that's my personal choice. People have different resources nowadays, right? You can grab a book, you can find a mentor, you can Google search things, you can find programs, right? You can consume courses, you can get these courses for your team, right? Get books for your team, all these resources, close your team to them as well. And what I meant by container is, again, how are you going to deliver the result that you are promising to mm -hmm. or solve a particular problem you want to solve? Whether you're doing it through a training, whether you're doing it through a course, whether you're doing it through a program, through a hybrid business model, there's millions of ways to do it. Through mm -hmm. a platform you created, through a done for you, through a done with you, because I do mm -hmm. business models for me, I'm exposed to all the different types. But um, that's what I mean by container. How are you going okay. to deliver the result that the other party needs or solve the problem they have? Right. And I would quite consider that uh, um format or or some of the details so it's sort of like what we talked about before and that's what i thought you meant by it okay so i've only got two more questions one is actually moot because of our outside of this interview interaction where you're already doing this so it doesn't matter but this second last one is relevant and that is considering the potential impact on your organization or those of your clients what pricing model would you find best uh, fits um, in terms of the, the kind of training we're talking about. Uh, One-time payment, monthly, semi-annually, yearly, subscription, blah, blah, blah. Again, I think that depends on the deliverable, uh, especially when it comes to this kind of training. But I personally follow quality business models. So quality rather than quantity, right? So not high volume, but low volume business models, where again, you're delivering on quality. So yeah, I would say the pricing uh, terms depend on what are the needs, right? Mm -hmm. And what is a win-win situation for both parties? If you're going to deliver a training, you probably want to ask for, you know, for that payment based on the service and the value right away, right? So I don't mm -hmm. think there is, you know, a, again, cookie cutter answer. I think it depends on... Mm -hmm what your offer is and so you refine it then if i said okay i have a course today on on culture building through leadership and um, you are saying okay my company needs that uh, without any further information than that what of those models one time monthly quarterly da, da, da. so if i gave you that and i said this will work for you i will you know, I will be accountable to the results I give you. What would be your first gut reaction to the idea of what pricing model you would prefer based on such limited information? So for me personally, one type payment would be fine. However, depending on the ticket, the price of your course and your audience, you know, in their finances and also their mindset, you would probably have to tailor your business model to maybe giving people a couple of options for payments mm -hmm. uh, rather than just versus just a one-time payment. But right. I think it depends on the price of your course. Uh, if it's a low volume, low ticket course, that price is the price. Uh, mm -hmm. But if it's more expensive because of other, you know, things that you've added on there, then mm -hmm. I would say that would be probably something you would want to give people maybe another two or a couple of other options, not too many. I would say more than three options, confuse. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say maybe, yeah, two other. Having to evolve in a market where they were the big dog and they're no longer so special. 
that always happens. You have to innovate right now with AI. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I never care about the tools or the platforms because that's going to evolve. And we're always going to try to do things more efficiently. And new platforms like the one you're telling me are always going to come up now to the surface. So, uh, but yeah, definitely send me more information. Send me the name if you can, or if you have a link, I'll send it out. I do use another one right now for my content, but yeah, sounds like right. why not? I'll check it out, see what the features are, compare and contrast and go from there. Right. I, I, I'm excited to see this podcast episode to see how you're going to put it through that platform <laughs> and look at the end product. So you let me know when it's live. Right. So. I, I absolutely will. I was going to say, this can be very, um, and you know, time consuming and it's great for branding and all of that, but I'm sure mm -hmm. you're needing more monetary and more clients. So if you like to have a conversation about that strategy with me, I'd love to kind of give you my insight on how to bring in the income with, as you are building all these different pieces in the business as well. Then just let me know, um, on, you know, when you launch mm -hmm. it and all of that and, I send I you the link to come on to my audience and speak about the work you do. And so we'll stay in touch that way then. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you for your day. time. Alone, it was a pleasure. Bye-bye.